everyone, welcome back to Frag Chat with me, I was going to call it me, Smurf, <laughs> with me, Smelly, and her, Smurfy. Yes, or Dan and Claire if you prefer. So we're back and it's the first episode in Claire's new house, Yay! which is great news. Mm. How are you feeling? Really, really happy. It was a massive, it was a big stress, <laughs> massive stress, but I'm here and I'm happy, yeah. It's really nice and it's in Rochester. Are we allowed to say that? Yes. Rochester. Just in, my full address. No. Uh, <laughs> Rochester in Kent and it's a beautiful part of the world. Not far from where Claire lived before, but uh, it's maybe a bit of a step up, I think. Bit, a bit yeah, more space. Yeah, a bit more going on around here and um, the house itself is definitely a lot better, I think. And we are inside it despite appearances. <laughs> it's got this rather charming brick. Thing behind her, so we, we thought that'd be a pretty good background. Yeah, yeah. But we'll work out what the best background for Frag Chat is. Not just not quite as homely looking as the other one. But no, there's no sofa here at the moment. Well, there's sofas in the lounge, but the lounge is a bit dark for recording. We'll work out the best oh. place. But anyway, for today, so uh, exciting stuff on the agenda today. We're going to uh, speaking of agenda. See what I did there. We're going to talk about gender and Ooh. fragrances. Should they be gendered or not? Yes. Controversial topic. And we're also going to be talking about one of Claire's new favourite pickups. Uh, a new fragrance and Bortnikov fragrances. We're going to be featuring them for the second time on the channel. We've got some new ones from that great house. So let's get stuck into Exciting it. Stuff. First subject then, uh, which should be in the title of today's video, is gender in fragrances. So, of course, the whole issue of gender in recent years has become a little bit more mm. um, on the, the, the controversial for some people. And kind of tying into that, I think, a little bit less and less do people see fragrances that we wear yeah. as necessarily a man's or a woman's fragrance. Mm. So we want to know what you, the viewers, think about that. And I want to know what you think about it. <laughs> so what do you... Well, I, I can't help but describe a fragrance sometimes as whether it leans masculine or feminine. And I think that's just the way that we are used to fragrances in our current uh, situation and what we've grown up with is mm. that female fragrances tend to be flowery and sweet and men fragrances tend to be more woody or earthy or green mm. but I think now we've got niche and things are a bit different and really anyone can wear anything but I still find myself drawn to slightly more feminine fragrances mm -hmm. and not so much masculine Right. But whether that's because I'm a woman or whether it's because I have a sweet tooth, mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure. But Interesting, yeah. Because there are there are lots of guys who really love gourmands yeah, nowadays, yeah. Yeah. which are very sweet fragrances. Mm. It's interesting you said about niche because I think you notice very rarely now do niche fragrances explicitly say that it's for a man or a for woman, it, whereas man. designer fragrances yeah. still tend to call themselves gentleman or Walmo or Pour Homme or... Or the new Gucci though is not for anyone. Ah, yes. It's kind of, not even described as unisex, it's described as... What's they it? just kind of didn't... What is it? Like asexual almost. Yeah, <laughs> I think they said ungendered, but I'm yeah. not sure, or at least they... Gender avoid... neutral? So that's, that's a common that's phrase a, these days. I'm not sure Gucci used, I'm not sure what term they mm. used or if they used one, but they avoided any they mention. They didn't say unisex, of, which yeah. is notable, I think, because yep. previously it was CK1, which is pretty much mm. the first unisex fragrance yes. from, for modern times. Yep. And that was very much unisex, wasn't it? Mm. But okay. now it's as if, oh, maybe unisex isn't the right thing to say because it perhaps implies men or women, and now perhaps we're just not even meant to acknowledge that such boundaries exist. So interesting uh, subject mm. and I kind of tend, to, I'm definitely on the fence because I totally think anyone can wear anything. Yeah. I agree with you about that and I think a lot of fragrances, especially with the niche world being, like, offering us a lot of less obvious traditional types of fragrance. Mm. There are so many categories that could be for anyone. And really now. how can a smell be mm. masculine or feminine? Really, yeah. because a man doesn't smell that much different to a woman. No. So um, why would a smell? Be... Yeah, it's like yeah. That, it, why would you have? You wouldn't have men's food and women's yeah, food, exactly, would you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or, but then again, you have certain. I mean, even within that, there are certain drinks that you expect a man to drink beer mm. and a woman to prefer wine, but it doesn't have to be. No. Everything's a bit like that in life. I, on the other hand, I do really like sometimes say this is a real masculine powerhouse mm -hmm. fragrance and I really like that. Yeah. And sometimes I even like to think, God, this is a really uh, 
it makes me think of a glamorous older woman or mm. something like that. So, I'm. Um, what do you think? It's all to do yeah. with scent memory, though, isn't it? And what what you're used to and what you've experienced in life. So yeah, I don't yeah. think it's necessarily you being stereotypical or prejudiced to say that reminds me of a a man right, no. or a yeah, young yeah. girl or whatever. Mm. It's just memory, and you can't. I don't think anyone should be berated because no. the scent memory just makes them think of a particular type of person that's but true yeah. i think things are now getting more blurred and mm. i think now that designers are getting sort of in on it yeah, as well that's a new thing the gucci one yeah. is one of a very few that don't seem to be obviously marketed towards a man or a woman so mm. i wonder if that trend will continue in design and I stuff i think it will think yeah it i think it will it's quite brave of gucci i think what what they released mm. there but um, yeah, it was, and the smell of it's actually. We won't get into that, but it's different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think either of us love it, but no. it's definitely different. So mm. yeah, interesting times in the world of perfume. Let us know what you think below about that subject. Right, are we going to go into the first actual specific yes. fragrance? So yes. I'll let you introduce this one. Okay. I think you're rather smitten I am. with this. Do you want me to hold it? Yep. Yeah. Oh, you're gone. <laughs> so this is Bengal Rouge. And it's by Papillon Perfumery. Perfumer is Liz Moores. And this has just been released. It only came out in September. I did have a sample of it. She did do pre-samples. And I fell in love with it from the sample. Dan's got it on his arm just there. You've got notes of tonka, sandalwood, rose, myrrh, vanilla. It's really rich and oriental. There's honey in the opening. The honey is really quite noticeable, but I find that it fades fairly quickly, which I'm happy about because I'm not mad about honey, but it does, it's subtle enough that I do enjoy the opening, but it's the dry down where it really does, that that's where right. the magic happens, it's just absolutely stunning. And you've done a video specifically yeah. dedicated to it. I've only smelled mm. it for the first time about 10 minutes ago and I've got some on my eye. I would say we're still in the phase where it's quite a lot of honey, yeah. which is I've, really nice. Mm. So it's, it's honey and tonka. I think you can smell the sandalwood as well. It's quite spicy. It's definitely spicy. But there's yeah. no added spices. Liz, uh, I did ask oh, right. Liz. I said, "How's it so spicy?" She yeah. said, "There's no spices, but the tonka itself is very spicy." Oh, okay. It's a very multifaceted smell. Yeah. And then it goes on forever. So the longevity is 12, 13, 14 hours. Wow. I know it sounds mad, but it really is. And. It gets better and better and better and better the longer you wear it. And even hour 12, because I wore it the other night, even hour 12, yeah. it was actually still projecting nicely around me so I could smell it. Wow, but still. It's, but it's not a beast mode that you walk into a room and knock people out with it. Right. It just kind of sits at that perfect level. But for a long time. Yeah. Which is kind of the idea, it's what, really. It's, it's perfection, actually. It's perfection in a bottle. You really like it yeah, that much? Yeah, I love it. Wow. Okay, so praise indeed, mm. and a couple of their others we quite like as well. You've got Tobacco got Rose, tobacco you? Rose. which I, I think is fantastic. Yeah, I'm a fan of Anubis. I never bought a full bottle because it's quite, um, it's a bit leathery, and it's um, it's a slightly odd one, but I really enjoy it. So it's I've a little got, bit challenging. I've got a decant, but I always feel like I'm not quite sure what other people will make of this on me. So I just wear it for myself, really. But they're, they're all, all her fragrances are amazing. She spends years making them, and you can tell. Yes, well, I've oh. really liked mm. everyone that I've tried. And we'll, we'll actually, we'll link to their uh, website down there. And my opening pressures, I do really love the rich honey mm. and spices that I'm and getting off you enjoy off that. Tonka, I've noticed. I love Tonka, tonka being, in a yeah. fragrance always kind of does it for you. And the Tonka in there is really, really nice. So I'll wait to see how that develops mm. on my arm. And there. trust me, 12 hours later. Wow, really? Still Beast mode. It. Yeah. Okay, guys. So, yeah, let's know if you've tried anything from Papillon, from uh, Liz Moore's. It's a perfume, yeah. isn't it? Have you tried Bengal Rouge and what do you think? Yes, we'd, lo we'd love to know your thoughts. So, moving on next, maybe to the main course today. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be Bortnikov. So, this is the second time that we featured them on Frag Chat. And uh, I've got one that I got a while back, which is Amber Cologne, that I was really taken with that we featured when we first um, got some samples. So really, really nice uh, mixture of florals, jasmine. That's got frangipani. And frangipani. Yeah, very tropical. And, and citrus, mm. and very complex, but very, very wearable. One of the, the more fresh smelling ones from the house. Yeah, there's uh, nothing weird or hard to understand in that at all. Yeah, 
Absolutely. Even though it does have oud listed, does it? Does it does have oud listed, yeah. but if you're a bit averse to oud, you won't have a problem with that no, one. No, not at all. So we've got the three the three new ones in their fourth collection. So I'll probably be featuring these in a bit more uh, depth, maybe on my own channel when we've tried them out a bit more, or maybe mm -hmm. back on Frag Chat. But we're going to do a first impressions today. We've yep. just actually sneakily we went to the cafe for a glamorous all meal, an all day an all day breakfast for lunch, <laughs> uh, and over that we smelled them. Um, so. We're now going to revisit each one. So yeah. there's three new ones from the house, and it's, it's their fourth collection of fragrances. And the first one we're going to do is Symphony de Neroli. And the company very kindly sent me these samples, uh, plus one full bottle of Musk Cologne, which is uh, not in the fourth collection, I don't think. But we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. So Symphony de Neroli is coming up now. Um, we'll tell you the notes in a minute. I'll do... Just do one because one, they're cause quite they're so cool, potent. Yeah. It's a shame to waste. <laughs> so Bortnikov, um, they source extremely high quality ingredients. Uh, some of the fragrances have things like real oud and many different varieties of it, not synthetic oud. Real ambergris, I think. Don't quote me, but I think yeah, they have. Pretty sure they do, yeah. And real actual deer musk, which is very rare to find in a uh, fragrance. The man behind it is Dmitry Bortnikov, a gentleman from Russia. I believe the company is based in Thailand. Yeah. So uh, that's that's about them. Mm -hmm. What do we think of Symphony de Neroli? I really like it. It does remind me a little bit of the amber cologne. In that uh -huh. I smell a lot of exotic florals. It smells to me like jasmine and frangipani again. Right. But there is a distinct oud note in here, which there isn't in amber cologne. Yes. Not that it overtakes, but you can smell it. It's, al it's almost taking up 30% of the space. Right. Or so. And if you were thinking, oh, Symphony de Neroli, maybe it's an alternative to Neroli Portofino no. or no, 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 Ferrari no. Bright Neroli. No, it's no, no, nothing, no, no. it's not that kind of fragrance. Is I wouldn't it? even say I necessarily pick out an individual Neroli note because Neroli can be quite bitter. Mm. Sometimes it smells a bit like stinging nettles to me. Yeah, I know what you mean. And yeah. um, I'm not really getting, I'm getting much more of an exotic floral with mm -hmm. just a, a, an overall uh, citrus. A chord mm -hmm. that could be a combination of bergamot, lemon, oh. orange. Yeah, I agree. Mm. So, yeah, the notes on it are not just Neroli. There's quite a few different citrus notes in the top, which are bergamot, lemon and lime and clementine. So, exactly as you said. Yeah. Tunisian Neroli, jasmine sandback, vetiver from Java, vetiver from India, ambergris, oak moss, virginian cedar, oud from Trat. My favourite kind of oud and peri balsam and tolu balsam. So really mm. complex, not just about neroli. And this word symphony is quite good because there's a real yeah, melange yeah, of notes make, going on yeah. in here. Uh, so it's only early impressions, isn't it? But yeah. we both really oh, okay. enjoy that one. Very I did complex. Put it on my skin, didn't I? Earlier? Yes. Where is it? I think it was the hand. Yes, that's changed now. That smells more orangey. Yeah, it's, for, it's more. And citrusy deeper. now. Am I right? More, more orangey, but then with a, some sort of earthy depth. Mm -hmm. Not so exotic and fresh and floral. Oh, okay. I think, uh, I think I it's mean, gone. Yeah. I'm getting more what I'd expect from a Symphony de Neroli. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Yeah, the now. bitterness. The bitterness of yeah, Neroli's come out has now. Come so it looks like the Neroli is not necessarily showing its face immediately. I found with these they're very complex yeah. and they change mm. a lot. So it's almost marmalade with neroli. Marmalade. Could be. I like not marmalade. <laughs> yeah, I like that. So yeah, uh, I think we'll definitely come yeah. back to these because these need to be done full justice to. But yeah, very very complex. They really smell niche. So mm. if you are into true niche stuff not sort of BS niche that you know we get a lot of releases now mm. in your department stores that are niche but they smell a lot like designer stuff these don't do they no even if there's one you don't like mm. you can't deny there's exciting stuff going on here the next one then is Sir Winston which I can only assume might be to do with Winston Churchill I but think it so, yeah. might not be um, might be the dog from um, the insurance advert is he called Winston isn't it? Oh no, he's oh, called, no, Churchill. He's called Churchill. Yeah. <laughs> Let us know if you've seen that advert. 
<laughs> what does he say? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. Oh, yeah. I really <laughs> oh, like yes. that. Oh, yeah. I do really <laughs> like that fragrance a lot. Um, so I would say that is very uh, boozy, spicy, and with a lot of tobacco. And that's my first impression. Shall I just? Quick? I find that you you read the notes. The notes are green tea, tuberose, ambergris, tobacco, absolute, vanilla, and Indonesian buya, which I think in the last episode that was one of the types of oud that they right. use. Buya oud. I'm not sure. To me, it's really savoury, kind of like hay or dried grass. I get the hay thing, yeah. I would have said it was really sweet. Almost honeyed, yeah. though. I think it's dried or tobacco leaves of some kind mm. with honey on them, but a much more niche complicated take on that than for example mm. tobacco vanilla by Tom Ford. Yeah, tobacco vanilla is very rich and in your face. Yeah, this is is fresher. Yeah. And I think fresher, yeah. More outdoorsy. It does Could be. to me it feels like yeah, like um, piles of hay, what they call haystacks. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking haystacks and maybe even like hyacinth um is it hyacinth? Green? Do you pick Those, up? Go on, sorry. Yeah, it is kind of like green, but floral. Do you pick up on green tea at all? Maybe a little bit. I'm not. I've never really understood tea because I don't drink tea, so I don't always. I, often I find if tea's listed, I don't always like it too much. Okay. But yeah, it could be actually could be a bit of a um, like smelling a, a cup of tea. That tannin. That's in the, yeah, the tannins maybe. The tannin yeah, yeah. that you get from tea that's mm -hmm. also in red wine. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, that, now you're talking. Yeah, yeah. That, maybe that's even why I'm getting there's a sort of element of booziness, yeah, I maybe. Like, I, I don't really get boozy, but I do get tannin now, now that we're talking. Mm -hmm. So, with the name Sir Winston, it sort of feels a bit like a gentleman's club type smell to me, with mm. the, the booziness and the tobacco. Like a bit of a classic kind of smell in there for me, maybe. Do you not agree? No, I okay. don't. Um, it does smell more like your kind of thing, mm -hmm. certainly than mine. Um, it does have a greenness to it, but it's not like anything I've ever smelled before. I wouldn't ever compare it to any of your typical fragrances that you really like. No, no, it's not. No, it's not a typical um, um, men's fougere or something like that. No. No. All right. I, I, I can't. I don't even know what to say. It's. <laughs> <laughs> It's really, it's it's really unusual. I really like it. I think mm. it's. A, I would describe it as a rich, tobacco, decadent, but sophisticated. It's definitely not tobacco cloying. leaf, and it's not a, like a packet of sweetened tobacco. Yes. It's it's more like your green tobacco leaf. Agreed. Okay, yeah. so very interested in that one on first impressions. And last but not least, we've got Zemfira. Zemfira. Do you want me to okay, read out Okay, yeah, that'll be great. So we've got bergamot, pink pepper, may rose, hybrid tea rose, atlas cedar, Bengalian sandalwood, Vietnamese oud. Wow. So second time smelling these. Is it, they've all got a wow factor on the first spray, without a doubt. Yeah. And I think for people who weren't into fragrances, they some of them would be quite challenging. They would be if you were used to smelling designers. Yeah. And then suddenly smelt this, I think you you'd be like, oh no no no. no yeah. No. This one I'd say smells more boozy to me. Oh, okay. What would it say? Uh, so, rose tomato. Okay. Yeah. You can smell the rose. Actually, yeah. the rose is really strong. Really. Yeah, a fresh. It's a fresh rose, like um, oh, yeah. a fresh garden rose, rather than a a thick, syrupy, sweetened rose. This is good. I think this might be my favourite. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite. quite yeah, it is quite floral, isn't it? Mm. And then there's. It has got quite a notable oud undertone do you agree or well, not so much i get something earthy right whether it's oud if i didn't know oud was in there i'm not sure i would pinpoint it right. i would say is there is there something like patchouli or something earthy and mineral 
um, to me it's almost like roses growing in the wet earth. Right. Damp earth. There's something I really like about that. Mm. Um, yeah, a very fascinating fragrance. Um, again, very complex. I think they change a lot on your skin because yeah. I wore this one on skin mm. and it, it went on for a long time and it changed a lot. Um, is that? I'm definitely getting a hint of sweetness under there as well. Is that from the rose or what else have we got in here? There's no vanilla um, listed, but it's... Cedarwood can would... have a sweetness to it. you got pink pepper. Um... We wouldn't know the difference between Vietnamese oud and other types, would we? So no. if any connoisseurs out there <laughs> can tell us. But I really find it's very exotic, very... And the name suggests something exotic to me. Mm. I'm not sure what it's meant to be all about. Let's have a go. I find that very compelling and fascinating. Yeah. A really nice rose. I, I, at the moment, at the stage that it's in now, it's definitely mm -hmm. a rose fragrance okay. to me. But with a real exotic and unusual backbone to it. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. So these are definitely fragrances for fragrance connoisseurs. Yeah. Not for beginners. And they are quite um, pricey as well. They are. Uh, we will link them in the website so you can go and check out uh, the different, I think there's some different size. I think you can buy samples, maybe 9 mil they sprays. they do travel size, yeah. Uh, but they do do 50 mil bottles of well. So, uh, speaking as of which, mm. then, I've got one more that the company, since I so liked Amber Cologne, they very kindly sent me Musk Cologne, which I guess is kind of a follow-up for, mm. for that. Some people are saying it's sort of a combination of Amber Cologne. Right with musk cabbie oh, one okay. of their other ones not yeah. not a, like a just a mixture of the two but yeah. uh, in some ways it captures some of the elements of right. each one so we'll do, okay. we'll do an unbox yeah. yeah and you quite like amber cologne and i musk really like the amber cologne i did like musk Khabib, except for there was a part of it i didn't like which was okay. probably i think the deer musk uh -huh. it's like a slightly meaty aspect to okay. it but i really love the florals in the musk Khabib. I think it was, is it Jasmine that? I can't remember. Musk but... Khabib, I think, is amazing and I would really like to add that one to my collection. Mm. I don't remember the notes specifically though. So, we get a nice wrap on these, which I'm trying to get into. Yeah, do you want to read the notes yeah. about while you're unwrapping? That would be brilliant. I'm wrapping on camera. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> That's the whole point, isn't it? Right, the notes here are bergamot, lemon, tangerine, sweet orange. Green tea, lily of the valley, magnolia, tuberose, yang ylang, ylang ylang, carbaga deer musk, Indian sandalwood, and guyac wood. So we've got the animalic of the deer musk. Guyac wood can be kind of smoky and slightly savoury, almost leathery sometimes. We've got some real Heavy hitters with the florals, you've got Lily of the Valley, tuberous and Ylang Ylang, and some lovely citruses as well. So it could be very interesting. Okay, so they come in a rather nice presentation box, oh. and although simple, I like the bottle designs mm. and the plaque is rather snazzy. So yeah. let's we've not tried this at all, we've not had a sample. So could you hold that please, madame? Mm -hmm. uh, let's find out. Musk. Cologne. Right, ready? ready? Fire away. Two. Okay. There's eau de parfum concentration. Uh -huh. Okay. I'm going to let you speak first. Mm -hmm. The lids look Ooh. like that. I think these are teak wood lids. So they're real teak. wood. Teak, sorry. You always say teak. Ah, well, about time you. Corrected me, you? why didn't you tell me sooner? <laughs> Sorry, teak wood. Oh, I like it. Yeah? Yeah. It's... God, the, the citrus is in the florals. It's like they're all combined together in one beautiful note. And then there's just this kind of woodsy, musky, mm. slightly mineral aspect at the same time. Yeah, it's definitely got, you can definitely sense some similarities with Amber Cologne. But uh, it's not as clear and no. fresh floral as Amber Cologne. No. There is this grounded... Like you say, more musky. And it feels like, I mean, it's not listed, but it feels like there's a bit of grapefruit in there as well. Right. 
bergamot, lemon, tangerine, sweet orange. Might so, be the tangerine. Yeah. So, and I'm starting to get a hint of the animalic coming through yeah. now. Yeah. This does have, of course, the real deer musk in mm. it. So um, that's quite a rare thing to get in perfumes. And I definitely got a nice, rich muskiness. Mm. The tangerine's quite dominant. Oh, it's wow. a really, it's really sweet. You see yeah. the sweet orange or the smell of the sweet orange yeah, in there? Yeah, it's sweet. Yeah. Sweet citrus. It's mess, almost like orange and grapefruit smell. It's, it's sweet. Oh, it's not too yeah. sweet. It's not bitter or sour. It's fresh. It's singing. Yeah. It has freshness, but it's also got this animalic and musky undertone. Mm. Does it have? There's no no oud listed in this one, so it's interesting. Mm. I really like that on first impressions. Very good. House Sorry is falling I... down. <laughs> yeah. All right. Very sweet that tangerine note. And the animalics behind it, but at the moment they're not too strong, so that it's not um, it's not too much. But you can tell. I would guess there was oud in there. Yeah, I would. I feel like I can smell a bit of oud. Yeah. That's interesting, mm. it doesn't seem to be listed. Mm. So. I like that, I think that mm. might be, based on that very quick mm -hmm. um, impression, I think that's my favourite of the lot. Okay. So that was a, very much a first mm. impressions of some complex fragrances which we would probably demand full, much more full wearings. They need to and, be and, worn and, on yeah. skin. Yeah. And given time. Uh, a really exciting house, so, and it's, I love the fact that they're using some ingredients that you, you really don't get very often in fragrances. Mm. So, worth checking out absolutely for all niche connoisseurs. Definitely. And um, we'll be featuring them hopefully more on both our channels uh, coming up soon. So, that's mm. nearly it for today. I think we're going to do a quickie on Troll of the Month or Troll oh, yeah, of the yeah. Moment, mm. uh, which is on my channel, uh, a gentleman called Dr. Kramens Bulovic, mm. or so he calls himself, aka Vlad Bully. Uh, he's been sending me a lot of messages about his new fantastic, so he claims, fragrance, Swordfish. Uh, so the most recent one, I won't read the quote, but it offers me a, a yearly salary of, I think, £185,000 mm. to turn over my YouTube channel solely to promoting Swordfish. <laughs> uh, and offers me some kind of Audi car as well as mm. part of the deal. So we would love to know who this person is. You, I, you think you might know, don't you? I've got a couple of suspects. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he has not a, me. You were one of them initially, but I realised you probably didn't have time for all this. <laughs> <laughs> it just seemed too much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So and also he sent me. He has actually sent me a sample of the fragrance. Can we smell it? I've I've left it at home. Aww. Sorry. I, I should have thought of that. Yeah. Um, so I was scared to spray because I thought it might be mustard gas or you know something, mm. but it was okay. Um, I'm sure it must be just a fragrance that already exists, but I don't I know. I don't know, it might be swordfish. It's quite good, mm. it's pretty good. Uh, so, in fact, I'm supposed to say it's the greatest fragrance I've ever smelled in my lifetime. Right, That's yeah. what he said, so I'll say that. Okay. It, well, it is, yes, it, Dr. Yeah. Yeah, I want my £185,000. Okay. Yeah, and your Audi A6. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. So let us know in the comments any ideas who might do such a thing, or if it is you and you want to own up, please let us know. <laughs> Is that it for today? I think that is, yeah. We've got it in just under half an hour. Yeah. Thank you ever so much for joining us. We'll be back for another video in Claire's lovely new house. Congratulations Thank to you. you. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.